Uh, uh, Kevin probably doesn't want me saying it like that. Reverse. Right when I hit record. Uh, but I did want to kick off. We've got a lot to talk about, uh, and we have <coughs> two hours to do it, so we want to get started. Uh, but uh, I'm glad uh, everybody's excited to, to talk today about WordPress. Um, we're going to jump right into it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, this is demystifying the couple Drupal with content to CMS. How many people have heard about uh, the couple Drupal? All right, so we will probably be able to breeze through some of the basics on decoupling, but please ask questions along the way. Uh, we don't need to wait till the end. This can be kind of interactive. Um, so we'll kind of jump in. So these are, this is what I meant. We'll, we'll kind of talk briefly about what's decoupled Drupal in case somebody doesn't know and why would you decouple Drupal, which is probably the most interesting question that I think a lot of people have is why do you do it? Um, and uh, what's Contenta CMS? We want to talk about Contenta um, and really what that offers, what that gives you. Um, and then talk through the features. And then we're actually going to dive into demos and try to do more demo kind of things today versus, you know, talking about a bunch of slides and things like that. Yeah, we'll we see did, how that we goes. A bunch of screenshots of everything. Yeah. Guess, uh, Lots of videos of bio and stuff like that. But, um, <laughs> um, but I think it'll be fun. So don't, you know, Q&A can happen in, in between, so please ask questions. Uh, if we don't know the answers, we'll tell you, but we'll, we'll try to find it together. Maybe someone else in the room has the answer. So um, let's jump in. Uh, my name is Mark Shropshire. Uh, I go by Shrop um, on the internet and stuff. Uh, in case you hear me, people call me Shrop, then that, that way it doesn't confuse you. Uh, and I'm an open source or the open source security lead right now uh, at Media Current. And um, so I spend a lot of time on security focused things, but also um, get into, I'm always interested in tech, like I think a lot of us here, or we wouldn't probably spend our weekend. Uh, well, there's reasons to be in Asheville, but we wouldn't spend our weekend um, <laughs> kind of geeking out on all these things if we weren't interested in tech somehow. So, um, and my name is Bio Fideki. I have a lot less known profile on the internet <laughs> compared to Shrop. Um, but kind of like him, we spend a lot of time doing a lot of open source things, especially in, um, in Charlotte, local community, in the meetups. Uh, I have a fancy profile, so. <laughs> That's me, name is Bio. You, you, name usually gets turned into Bayo, Bayou, which you guys might hear often, but uh, Bio. So anyway, shop and bio are kind of synonymous a lot of times. Yeah. So, um, so uh, a bit about Media Current. Um, we're a full service digital agency, and the big focus is really bringing ROI for enterprises um, and making sure that they actually have value. So while we get excited about technology and we like to try all these new things, like things we're talking about today, we want to make sure that we don't have somebody just say, Hey, we want to decouple just because decouple is the cool thing to do. We want to make sure that you know maybe you're a Drupal basic Drupal sites all that's needed. So, um, so that's kind of what we do, and um, we have design and strategy and U UX and not just development. So, lots of people, smart people there that know a lot more than than I do. So let's talk about decouple Drupal. Sound like lots of folks are familiar. Um, this is the long description that's out there on Aquia about the couple Drupal. Uh, it's hard to find a really short description. It doesn't even <laughs> summarize it completely, but you know, um, I, think the, I think the main focus uh, with decoupling is, and, and it really that's why I think the more interesting question is why uh, do you decouple? But when we talk about decoupling, uh, there's different types. We'll mention those, but the main thing here is to uh, there's some, there needs to be some reason, some value to decouple, but in the end, you're using Drupal for what it does great at, and that's managing the content, and you're using other tools to create front ends, um, and it also plays into the API first kind of methodology where you know, you're going to have some type of API, some type of way to get data out to some other applications, um, and it's fun to not just think about, like, desktop and mobile apps. It's fun to think about native. It's fun to think about what do you do on watches? What do you do on uh, you know, other future tech that may come? All the screens and things like that. Devices, you can think about that too. Exactly, because it mentions IoT in here. 
Um, so there's lots of possibilities. So I just <coughs> want to chat about this. Um, so the fully decoupled method is kind of you have Drupal entirely as doing your your back end, your data management, content management, permissions, um, and you have a completely decoupled front end, and that could be any tool, any device that's consuming the data from Drupal, but doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Drupal. And kind of as he alluded to on the previous slide, that could be an iOS app, it could be you know medical software, it could be you know, some legacy application that's somehow integrating. Doesn't necessarily have to be a fancy front end, a fancy JS front end. It could be an old PHP application or old the .NET, whatever it is, if you need to integrate uh, maybe your, your old legacy systems, but you're getting data from Drupal. Uh, whatever it is that's consuming data from Drupal that's not um, also Drupal. I guess it could also be Drupal. That's the other thing, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but just something else that's rendering your data from Drupal, Drupal being your back end, that you kind of your data source. Uh, so that's the fully decoupled thing. So it could be your, you know, your browser, native app, digital signage, which is another pretty nice, interesting um, approach. Um, and it could be all sorts of different things that's kind of consuming that, your, your data from Drupal. And, and Bio kind of reminded me of something. One of the demos he did at a Sharda meetup, and that's the Charlotte Drupal Users Group, um, uh, down in Charlotte. We have fun down there uh, doing meetups once a month, uh, second Wednesday uh, of every month that we could co-work, but if you're interested. But one of the things that he actually demoed on Content a few months back was just a separate PHP application, nothing to do with Drupal, that was consuming data from a, a Drupal 8 Contenta site. So that it does go to show that you know you can, if you think about it more as like this is just an API delivering data, and then just it can connect up to whatever you need to. That's that's really a good approach. Yep. So um, progressive, uh, progressively decoupled Drupal. Um, this one this one's really interesting. I think. Um, so uh, uh, I think a lot of the excitement a lot of times is fully decoupled, and that's more of what we're talking about today uh, with Contenta. But just to mention that uh, progressively decoupled is situations where you're still going to have some presentation layer, some twig theming type things going on, uh, presenting data, but you're also integrating some JavaScript frameworks uh, into maybe the, the uh, Drupal thing. And, we, and I, was, I was on a project where... Uh, and in the last six months where some of that was done, a few of us in a room were on that project. And it was, it was really neat to see how some React components could be plugged right into a Drupal theme and be used. Um, and what was even better was the client developed those React components. Uh, and I don't think, I don't think Zach's here, but Tobias is here. And you guys worked on all that. It was really fun because we saw, we were able to take the React components. I say we as in the row we, I had nothing to do with it, I watched it. But we, uh, but as a team, we were able to basically get those React components uh, with and with some modification, but not a whole lot, and uh, have those render through Drupal so that they didn't have to be written from scratch. So it, that was actually a nice uh, ROI for the business, which was really cool. Um, and again, same kind of endpoints, you know, browsers and, and native apps or, or whatever you can imagine. So here's the, this is the question that I like to ask, and I think you guys can come up with more reasons. I know there's been talk about, uh, uh, there's going to be talk about Drupal Commerce and, and decoupling. There's talk about, uh, you know, doing React, uh, focusing on React and other front end uh, JavaScript frameworks. But uh, really step back and say, what, why do we decouple whatever the project is? Um, some of the things that come to mind, um, and I'm gonna let you hit on this first one because I think. Oh yeah, talk so about some of the the front end developer experience. So most of you here know exactly how easy it is to find solid Drupal developers, and if you're not, if you're an organization, <laughs> if you're an organization that um, and you have a lot of development needs, you, you want to be able to progress on your front end. Um, be, needing to source for Drupal developers that have strong front end experience that might be a little bit harder. But you can find a lot more in general. I, I, I assume you can. I guess not like I've been looking or anything. But I assume you can find a lot more front end developers who, who know a lot more about some, some of these fancier, newer um, frameworks. You know, your React, they're into you know, view things, other ones, and things, because I don't know them. But um, 
So you, you, you can get people who can work on your applications who don't necessarily have any knowledge of Drupal. You know, you don't need to know all the Drupal APIs in order to be able to query for data. You can integrate with that, you know, just using JSON API or whatever. Um, and, and that's big for, for being able to advance your organization and keeping up to date, I guess, the, whatever your industry is. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's just, there's a lot to unpack with that, but um, it's, it is it is very beneficial for uh, any business that needs to hire developers. Hiring developers in general is tough. Hiring developers that fit on teams and do well on certain teams because yeah, you want people that like what they do, have passion for what they do, and enjoy it. And not, it's not just a job. Um, so being able to expand scope, and uh, I think it's great. Um, so content, we kind of mentioned this, so content can be delivered to many devices and formats and formats is kind of loose. I didn't know what word to use there that would be better, but uh, that that's, you know, anything you can imagine. It's just an endpoint with data and we really, a lot of times, and this is something as a, even a long time Drupaler, that's something that I really like to do is not talk about Drupal so much, like with clients and stuff. Not, the focus shouldn't be Drupal, like this is a solution that we think will solve your problems. Let's talk about that. Um, and from a developer experience on the front end, Let's let's just don't worry about it. It's Drupal. Here's an endpoint. Here's the data. Here's how it's structured. Um, if it's using standards like JSON API, you really shouldn't have to worry about the Drupal aspect. Let the Drupal developers worry about that. Certainly ask questions, but we really want people to be uh, independent on the front end to develop what they need to. Um, and uh, of course, multiple mechanisms to deliver it, like JSON API, GraphQL, uh, even Core REST, um, and 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 more. So if you know, if you wrote your own endpoint, uh, that's that's still decoupling. You know, um, so and, and a combination of of them. Yes. So if you had different needs, for example, um, uh, something could only read, connect to your application, reading REST or using REST. You, you can have that and still provide different mechanisms for other applications or other devices to connect. Um, so you, you get a you can mix and match based on. Based on needs. Just gonna add a personal data point is I worked on a progressive Drupal site, and one of the things we discovered was that our, uh, in terms of going through the story process, basically our front end designer could do the HTML and the CSS as straight HTML, and then basically pass that off to the, we were using Angular, pass it off to the Angular developers who then would use that for their templates. So as opposed to the Drupal development where you know, the CSS people can't really come into play until you get all of the blocks and they know right. what all the fancy Drupal classes are going to be. That was, that was you know, we could put actual HTML in front of the client faster. How many sessions have we had at DrupalCons about that issue? Yeah. Like the whole, you know, front, front, front ends waiting for development <laughs> to, to get that ready to go and and then just the whole, now now there's this, all these things we don't need so it's, you know, the ugly markup. Yeah, you can make markup look the way you want. I think that's a huge point. Yeah. And being able to send to teams. So you could also send to your iOS native, your Android native teams, let those guys work, and, and not really worry about where the data is coming from. Yeah. It's no different than as Drupal developers, we're connecting to some other API and consuming it. We don't, have to, we shouldn't have to worry about, right? We're, how that's constructed, how that works. Yeah. So. Yeah, as, long as, as long as people know that, okay, this, this paragraph is gonna be dynamic. Right. Yeah. Back in guys, fill it in. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then I, I think this one's a neat one. Um, just the ability, uh, and you used the word bio the other day to rebrand, but you know, the ability somebody comes along and says, All right, we're just ready to do a, uh, a redesign. And when someone says, I want to redesign, and, and you know, we, we all probably have had people that come in even now and say, We want to redesign, we don't want to go to Drupal 8, even though a lot of us wouldn't say, Let's try, how can we get you to Drupal 8? But a lot of times people say, but we're on Drupal 7 and we just want to redesign what we have. And um, so what's nice about um, uh, decoupling is that you can actually just replace that front end with a completely new system or a completely new rebrand and um, uh, you've got that flexibility. So, right. And one other thing too is with a decoupled architecture, it gives you the chance to be able to even update the uh, so you, you can rebrand the front end and also do upgrades on the back end, even if you ended up swapping the back end out to something else because of that decoupled nature, 
you can have a lot less kind of, I wouldn't say regressions, but a lot less things breaking in that process in between because it's not, one's not 100, well, you can definitely swap things out a lot easier. But to, to that point, like that just made me think of something else. Uh, so a lot of times on teams, it, it can be easy to get into, I call it pointy finger mode where, you know, it's a back end problem, it's a front end problem. And when you're dealing with just Drupal without the couple aspect, it's easy to do that because some investigation has to be done right to figure out where is that problem, where does it lie? Is it the integration? Is it the back end? Is it the front end? So I think that's plays into exactly what you're saying by it. So I'm sure I'd love to hear like afterwards maybe or this afternoon if people come up. I'd like I'd like to add to this list, so bring me your stories or even in this in the Q and A. I'd like to hear other reasons you have for decoupling. I know there's more. I keep asking this question a lot at camps, Charlotte Drupal Driving, we talked about it a bunch. Um, some of you in this room were there and so this is this list kind of came from some of that. Um, I just want to mention there's nothing wrong also with the traditional Drupal approach. Um, especially when we're talking about the advantages that D8 offers uh, with Twig, things like that. If And th this came up at Charlotte Drupal Drive, and I kept asking questions. So what's wrong with Twig? I hear people say they don't like Twig, they don't like doing the Drupal. What, talk to me. I want to understand more about what does that mean from everybody's viewpoint. And I think the conclusion was there are times where it's totally fine. It makes sense just to run just a Drupal site, and it's the advantages aren't there to decouple. Maybe the budget's not there to decouple. So, um, so I think that still is a... As exciting as all the tech is, and we're excited about it, that is a thing that's uh, is a reality. You have to do what's right, um, you know, for budgets and the client. So, we're going to jump in. I went to Contenta CMS to talk about that. Uh, this one is this is some easy slides here, but Contenta CMS is a distribution that basically gives you the a, a decouple, a, some options to be decoupling easily with Drupal eight. Uh, what I would say after using it. Uh, for a bit. What I would say about it is, you certainly can start a project, and I know people that have, and they, they started it with Contenta, and they have continued to use Contenta. Uh, I like to view it as an academic type situation, kind of, you know, a Kickstarter of sorts, where you can actually not have to go and figure out all the modules and pieces and, and bolt them together. Folks have spent time and working on that uh, in the community. So, leverage that and learn about you know decoupling and have that backing going. I think where it could lead you to is then what are the modules that I need to plug into maybe an existing Drupal 8 site to do the decoupling later. That's kind of my philosophy after takeaway after this. Uh, but that's not to say you couldn't you certainly could kick off a content to site and that be your back end site core and you can still update it um, and that sort of thing. I don't know if you have anything else on that. Um, no, that, that I, I agree hundred percent there. Uh, so as far as features, so I just wanted to highlight some of the features here. Um, the uh, just just to kind of just say this is really more of what content it is. So Drupal 8, uh, it's it's all open source. I mean that's a value mark you should always talk about um, these conferences. I think uh, in camps, the um, uh, there's example content. So this is a really neat aspect. When you install, you have the option to install uh, example sample content to immediately have something to work with. Right. And that's a huge value. Agreed. And um, there's some example consumers, and what that is, those are example uh, front-end frameworks, uh, Vue and React and Angular, and uh, I think there's maybe a couple more, but um, I, it, don't we usually say, you know, React, Angular, Vue, and then da, 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 da. The I, 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 you know, what the other things? Uh, there's other, there's lots of frameworks, but um, but there's some good examples to see how people leverage those frameworks to be decoupled. Um, I don't know if you want to kick off in some of these. But. Um, so you've got JSON API as part of, that's one that I'm a little bit more familiar with, and GraphQL, which, you might you might be able to talk a little bit more into GraphQL, uh, but JSON API, which uh, if if you install or get your your Contenta project set up, there's sections in there that actually have links to videos on getting you more familiar with um, JSON API and how you can use JSON API to fetch data from the site, filter, and pretty much everything you can do with the entity field query in Drupal, you can do with the JSON API, all your filtering by title, fields, and all of that, which, which is really powerful for being able to 
get the content you need from an external system without needing to do a custom code on the Drupal side to you know format data and do all the filtering for you. Um, you want to talk any about Graph? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just briefly say GraphQL is a uh, is a Facebook project. If you haven't worked with it, it's really neat. Um, uh, I've, I've done just more or less just messing around with it. I haven't had any formal projects go out with it, but um, this is just a great example of how out of the box Contenta can deliver. If you've already got a, a, a React Native app, maybe and it, you've been using GraphQL, so you can continue use GraphQL with it, and you can use JSON API for other things. So. Uh, but GraphQL is is got a lot of slick features. Definitely check it out. JSON API is a spec. GraphQL is a spec, basically, yeah. on how to implement uh, that system. Uh, but I really like GraphQL because of the way you can um, query. You can basically send a query to a GraphQL endpoint, and and in the back end, it can be combining different data sources, even if you want. And then you're basically getting. Uh, what we've probably all struggled with in development in the past is fancy union queries and things in SQL, trying to pull things together from disparate sources. And um, uh, but I really like GraphQL from uh, the standpoint of uh, its flexibility and that sort of thing. Um, and I definitely recommend uh, the Apollo client uh, and some of the stuff the Apollo group. So uh, I was involved with Meteor and Bio, you were too. But the Meteor development group started working on Apollo project, and there's some really great tools there that can kind of kickstart you. Um, Open API is uh, basically content gives you a way to document, built in to document as you build your content models, which are your content types and fields and things, uh, to, to actually just have a documentation, uh, kind of like if you use Swagger and things like that, to, to see like, all right, here's exactly how this API is constructed, this is what yep. it looks like uh, in a visual format and, and to test it. And if, um, if you guys have ever used Swagger before, it's kind of a API documentation is pretty slick. It lets you see your endpoints, uh, give some, I think it lets you test against some of those endpoints with some sample data. And all. This, is, this is just a really nice setup that lets you get a little bit more familiar with what your setup is. It's easy to share with front end devs to be able to point them to that and have them mess around with it. I guess other back end devs too. <coughs> Yeah, I think it's valuable. I know I, that's one of those that I kind of think is great for Contenta and it's great for the academic side, but you might not really need on your production site. So you right. kind of like, or you could have it just turned on in like a, uh, a, a internal site that you just want for internal documentation for developers is a great idea. So um, certainly don't need to take Contenta and go, well, I need everything here for decoupling. It's just a, a nice package tool set. Um, so OAuth, uh, simple OAuth module is included. And uh, with Contenta, and that is uh, their prescribed way to authenticate to endpoints. Obviously, there's lots of ways to authenticate to endpoints, and you can use other methods. Um, that, that's a, a standard. Uh, I will say it's complicated. Um, if you've ever worked on it, there's, and there's different types of grants. We'll talk a little bit about that. But, um, and I feel like this is a place where um, it is very valuable to when you implement OAuth to have review, team review, community review, because there's lots of little things you can do that could totally open up vulnerabilities on your application. So I will just put that warning out there. It's not that OAuth's bad, it's just there's complexities involved that um, could be interesting. So let's just jump into demos. This is what we've all been waiting for, the excitement. You guys are excited about hearing this talk. Um, but let's look at some demos. So I will mention quickly here that um, to install Contenta, we're actually not going to demo this and let you watch a bunch of command line things scroll by the screen, although that would take a bunch of time for my presentation to take pressure <laughs> off of us for what's coming next. But um, but anyway, that's that's as simple as you install it. It's It works really well. Um, Bob, you came up with the idea for this app. Um, that we just wanted something different, right. I think. I, I said, Bob, I don't want to do a blog. I don't want to go read blog data and display a blog. Because when's the last time anybody built a, has anybody built a blog in the last six months in here? And I know probably we have, and it's fine. You raise your hand. I'm just asking how, how many blogs. See, so you may have had design refresh count. It, it does, and blogs are fine. It's not a slam on blogs. My point is that we use blogs in the industry for every demo ever since Ruby on Rails came out, right? And so I feel like that um, uh, it's fun to just do something different. Um, a different application. Nothing wrong with blogs. It's a great way to demo Contenta, but um, and I have a blog, and it's all good. Um, so, 
So Bio came with this idea for stock Stockwatch. Right. So it's the concept behind it is still in progress. Um, <coughs> was to be able to have um, a React app or an external application that lets you auth into Drupal. Well, some some of the, some of the complexities, some of the layers of this were kind of a combined um, combined effort. But we wanted to be able to look through a list of stocks, which is coming from an external API, um, and be able to effectively watch a stock. So the similar thing would be like the stocks app that comes on iOS. So you can view a stock, save it effectively, and uh, be able to look through some of the information for it. But for the purpose of this demo, what we wanted to do, that's emphasis on the wanted to do part, um, we wanted to be able to demo authentication against Drupal, reading data from Drupal, um, and to be able to write data to Drupal, which would be the part of watching a stock. Okay. It's a short password. <laughs> <laughs> nice passwords. <laughs> that, that's fun. Unfortunately, you have to enter a password that long. Thank you. <laughs> it, I, you know, let's open Vim next. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, cool. So this, yeah, so this is uh, the back end of uh, Stockwatch, which is Contenta, and this is pretty much a base Contenta install. We did um, uh, make the home page user slash login, so you get the login if you try to go there. Um, in this situation, we're not expecting users to interact with this site except for OAuth, um, for uh, getting log login for that, but, um, but just we can kind of talk through some of the parts that we want to hear. Um, one of the things that's interesting is, um, uh, let's look at, you know, let me just look at our content situation here. So we've got a content type called stock. Mm -hmm. And I'll just... So it's pretty simple. Yep. So it has a company name, uh, stock price, and we're using a title field for um, for the stock symbol. Um, and kind of getting into what's been done on the Drupal side of it is yeah. um, there's a Stockwatch app. I mean, a Stockwatch module, which re reaches out to a stock API and just gets the company name and the stock price at the time you create the node. Um, which, you know, if you're building this out as uh, your project, you're going to end up selling it, you'd have some fancier things that it's doing. But for the, for the, sake, for the sake of what we're doing here, um, you, don't, you don't see the title field in here, but, you know, we have yeah, it. Yeah, but it's in the node. Right. The so if, if, you edit, if you edit, you'll see the title of it yeah. at the bottom as stock symbol right there symbol so I mean it's real simple um, and just and, it, and it's something we did so we tried to make the front end just be a front end without a node uh, server middleware component mm -hmm. going on um, to, to see how far we could push it and, and do that which it played into OAuth but um, and how we implemented OAuth but we really wanted to let Drupal do Drupal tasks and so that's where it was awesome that bio you were able to just have Drupal do the calls to go fetch things instead of, because we had the option, you could, you could have the front end and the React app go fetch that data and then push it to Drupal. So that's kind of a decision point. Right. Um, but it's nice to see where we, we, but we didn't, since it's strictly a front end app, there's really not a great way to store API keys and things like that in a static front end app. I mean, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to go find those things. So, yeah. um, and um, so some of the other features here, it, you'll, by the way, you'll notice that content models, this is, um, the Contenta group has uh, had some, they're trying to make things simple so someone doesn't have to think about, that's one of their goals to not think and worry about that it's Drupal um, and not really learn a lot about Drupal maybe. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting experiment, I would say. It goes along with some of the core things happening right now, um, trying to make things easier for people to get things spun up. But if you see content models, it's really just content types, um, but just wanted to point that out because um, that could be confusing for us. Um, it's fancy wording. It is, it is. Um, and we did, yeah, so in bio mentioned that, um, oh yeah, I want to, uh, let's jump in. You mentioned that, that you had the module that goes out and, mm -hmm. and 
uh, uses the uh, accesses. So this is this is when I go to API. This is what actually loads the uh, the Swagger, Swagger, the Open API stuff. Uh, right now, it is not loading, so I'm not gonna have you watch this any longer. Unless anybody wants to. Uh, I'm not sure why. Usually, because uh, Content is kind of an active development stuff. Usually, it's like one of those like if I go update that module, then it just works. So, um, so I'm gonna try that later. But, but what I want to show you in here is that. Uh, there's some uh, a mode here that talks about authentication and a simple uh, curl request. So if you want to use the authentication that it provides, uh, you can use this curl uh, command, and you'll enter the OAuth some of the OAuth information. And you'll notice there's this client secret. One of the things I did with I did a lot of research on to learn is a learning thing for me. But with OAuth, we didn't want to use a grant that that meant that the front end app held the secret. Um, you don't want that in your front end app uh, because it, it's, it, it can get exposed pretty easily. So uh, so we use a different type of grant, but if you're doing a node app in the middle, you can you can use um, like a password grant in OAuth. Uh, I'm happy to talk more about that and learn more about that from anybody uh, later today, but I uh, wanted to show some of these things. This is interesting, so if I go to advanced under API, this just shows us a little, this is, I think this is a nice thing with Contenta from the educational standpoint. You see there's JSON API, it talks a little bit about what it is. Uh, here's GraphQL, and you can enable GraphQL, and here's REST. You know, it's, uh, I know Drupal well enough to enable REST, and, and there you have it. So, um, and, and I'm really encouraged. For a while I thought that core REST was really kind of like not getting a lot of attention, and it seemed like JSON API was taking off, and then recently now there's a lot of initiatives to work on uh, core REST, so I'm really excited about that, because it's nice to have that there, because sometimes just a REST API uh, is is all you need for things. So those are some of those options um, that are built in. So I wanted to also show you real quick the OAuth setup. So we have simple OAuth built in. We've got uh, this is default settings right now, and you want this is another thing that you want to have reviews done on and make sure that you're setting the right things. Uh, that's a five minute timeout for access tokens. So that's how short a lot of times by default OAuth tokens are. Uh, your app should go and refresh those tokens for you all automatically. You're not logging in every five minutes, but kind of the apps do it for you in the background. Um, and then there's the refresh token that does that for you. There's an expiration time on that. That's the longer expiration, and that's when you'll occasionally, Twitter will say, hey, go log in again on some app. And you're like, I haven't logged in on Twitter for months. Well, now it's time to do it because we're out of refreshes. Um, there are some public and private keys involved with OAuth to generate those tokens. Do not put these in your um, public files folders, your web root. And these are the things <laughs> that keep out of there. Don't commit them into repos. It, it, you know, we, we put on thinking caps, like all these keys, you know, we're like, let's make sure we put them in our right places. And we were like really debating, well, we just need to get things to work. But we're like, yeah, but people will go look at these repos and I kind of don't want that best practice being out there uh, or the wrong practice. Worst, but worst practice. The worst practice, worst. yeah. <laughs> the terrible practice. Um, so, uh, so the other part uh, that's interesting under, under people, we've got some additional things like tokens and clients. So I'm gonna go to clients. This is the client we're using from the React app at the top. This is the OAuth consumer. It's it, like in uh, GitHub, you'll see your list of consumers, like uh, I think they're called clients maybe in GitHub, but you have this uh, ID, this UUID, and that's the client ID for, from OAuth's perspective. Um, we have a redirect setup. We're using localhost right now, but um, uh, but there's some settings in here, and uh, so these are the things you want to watch Mateo's video on uh, on the Contenta site. He's got several videos on OAuth. I, I definitely watched all those, and it'll help you configure this. So I think that's awesome. So that's the kind of the Contenta portion of it. Uh, in, in the background, I'm not going to get into this now because we don't have the time, but I would say when you install Contenta, go look through all the modules that come with it because that's really, in the configuration, that's where it's really interesting. All the work they've done is, the, is all of that. Um, so as far as the front end app, it's React. Yep. Um, and uh, what, do you want to talk about any of that from your perspective? Um, so for me, this project was big getting into React, so I don't have a whole lot of React experience. Uh, Shrub mentioned before, a lot of the front-end work, or the coupled type of work I've done in the past was using um, 
Meteor and Meteor with handlebars and it had a completely different kind of kind of integration. Um, is, so that, is, that, is that like saying that React's different from everything? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all um, how many people here are familiar with React? Well, that's quite a bit. All right. So don't laugh at the code. That's good because Core is starting it, to use React. At least in uh, Yep. That's a good thing. Um, so what this is doing is is just pretty simple. We had to simplify this quite a bit. Um, it's got a method to be able to log in, and that will demonstrate. Can you speak just a little bit louder? I'm going to stand in front of the microphone. Okay. Don't hit the me button. It looks like it's on. Can you guys? You'll know when it's on. There it is. Yeah. All right. Um, so one of the things that, like I said, is it's pretty it's simplified quite a bit. One of the parts we wanted to have is it has a login button, and that will demonstrate the OAuth aspect of it to be able to get a token and all the your session. Yeah, the authentication token. Um, so to demonstrate that, then we, we've architected this kind of like a single page app where there's just things that are shown on the page or not based on the state. Uh, if you know React, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, sorry. Um, <laughs> then what we've got here is a stock search, which is a simple uh, input field whatever you type here, and for simplicity of this demo. What, we, what's the Netflix one? It's NFLX. All right. So just for simplicity of this, it's not searching against the API since Drupal is the one that's doing all that connections. Um, but this is searching against the Drupal site, uh, getting the JSON API response, and filtering it based on the stock symbols that you've typed in here. Um, and we wanted to kind of go a little bit further along with this and flesh it out a little bit more, but um, it demonstrates the the ability to filter by content by essentially by title here. Is is what we've said so far enough for any investments? <laughs> <laughs> um, so essentially, what we've got in, on the you mind we, we can demo the I mean, demo whatever we want. We can add a new stock. If somebody yeah. have a suggestion for a stock to add in here. Just add it on the Drupal side? Yeah. All right. I, I'm going to let you drive. All right, let's do this. So that, okay, I don't know how to use this Drupal thing. So. <laughs> how about Amazon? Shop. Shopify. All right, give me stop. Give me the shop. Shop. Oh, yeah. boy, that, that was a great sample, right? <laughs> uh, and so what this is doing is based on the symbol, you save, it reaches out to the API, gets the company name, stock price, and you, know, you can get a lot more things if you wanted out of this. Uh, you architect these one because the data comes back, right? And so from here, uh, okay, I'm going to ask for one more stock in a second. So we take Someone's this to Amazon. Yeah. All right, so we'll try that in a second then. Um, so for those of us with like mutual funds and 401ks, anybody know the symbol right off like AM, AMZ, AMZ, I think. AMZ, 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 okay, cool. All right, so we do shop. And Shopify comes back as the current stock price. You just put that in Drupal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so AMCN uh, submit. There's nothing that comes back. I'm trying to this, you yeah, can see zoomed in everything. No, it's just, there's nothing beneath it. So okay, just trust us. You get to see yeah, that. There's also Apple AAPL. I got that one in there. So be cheating. <laughs> Drop put that in first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna add. Amazon AMZN. Save that gets the price. So, that's nice. We only, we, by the way, we only have like 235 requests left for the day, so we gotta slow down. <laughs> it's, a free, it's a free API. Yeah. So, and so you seen the disclaimer about 15 minute delay. <laughs> so now, um, now that that's in Drupal. You can be able to pull that in there. And so it, let's say this wasn't even the kind of structure you had in your application and you wanted to go in and um, you, you had something else that's populating this data. I'm a little excited that Amazon's jumped that much. I know. Okay. Let's, let's drop that quite a bit. My retirement. I was like 16. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that was because of a major stock split. 
Let's see. Oh, we got cash in trouble. I mean, this price. That's the first time. Did I say that? Wait, what are you saying? What are you, I thought I saved the. Oh, uh, never mind. Um, I just got told. Essentially, no matter what I change now, the pre save is overriding what I'm doing. I was trying to change the stock price to something really low to demonstrate it. We are um, taking pull requests. Yes. <laughs> if uh, anybody wants to work on this. So it's very much a work in progress. But anyway. Price is not dynamic, right? That's just doing when you create the node, you're doing the pull, right? Correct. Yeah. But you could say anytime you pull it up. Right, right. And I think so where we're headed, like right now it, the the kind of the follow happens as soon as you put one in on the front end. But you know, we obviously want to like let you search to make it kind of like the stock app on a mobile mm -hmm. device. Like you search, then you can choose to follow it or unfollow right. it. And, and do more later. Like this has become like now our pet project to uh, to just kind of learn a lot of these things, and it's a lot like OAuth and React and you know decouple. So, so there's some things that we've got. So we're going to have a few minutes left. Yeah, I'm going to uh, show the OAuth one. Okay, no, no, then let's do that. You what, sure? what I'm talking no, about. So you, you got it. Okay. Any questions on what Bias talked about so far? Does it <coughs> make sense? We're, I think the big thing is we're doing the. Somebody else? Oh, John. Could you set that up so that you just? Uh, Search multiple stocks at the same time. Yes. Doesn't the API can? Yes. That, yeah. yeah. Does not currently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feature you put your portfolio uh, we'll, in. And <laughs> John, we're going to put that in the list, and uh, in the quarterly meetings, we'll decide. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anybody that manages products knows that well. Um, so, I did not want to test the OAuth thing and demo that before I demoed this because I was afraid this would then break. <laughs> so we now will do the OAuth process. And I'll talk about that and that will kind of wrap up demos and have to ask questions along the way. Um, so I'm using uh, the implicit uh, grant type and that means we're not passing, we're not having to, on the client side, have the OAuth secret, which is the secret for that entire consumer. It's like a password for OAuth. And we don't want to do that on just a purely static front end. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to set what I need to do. I'm going to hit log out. And this may not be right. I'd love to hear arguments against this or it, whatever. For the sake right now, full disclosure, we're storing the access token in a session storage item. And then when you hit log out on the front end, clearing that session storage. But I felt like at least when you close tab, you're you know, it goes away, that session store, it's like local storage, but more session based. And that's just built into uh, JavaScript. But um, but that's where we're storing it now. I feel like there's better places to store that token on the front end of a static app. So I, I'm open for suggestions on that. Didn't want to put it in a cookie because I felt like then you're dealing with cookie timeouts and cookies seem like it felt weird to store that in. But um, but that's where, that's where it's stored so that subsequent requests I've got that available and I can just do a session storage uh, get item, just pick that up and then just use it and send it along with uh, as a bearer token. A uh, bearer token is uh, is what's being used for this implicit uh, OAuth. So bearer. Yeah. As well, by the way. Not a bear. <laughs> so the session, so the session, uh, I'll show you where that's stored there when we get through the process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of Drupal. Okay, so we're definitely logged out. Uh, these, there's no tricks involved here, by the way. Um, and then we're going to, um, let me make sure I've got everything right. I'm going to get rid, so the access token does come back in a, uh, from, in the OAuth workflow, it comes back like in a query string. Um, but, so I've kind of refreshed everything. We don't have it stored, um, everything, just ignore all that stuff. Don't know. Um, open for pull requests, but, um, but. <laughs> Now we'll go through the workflow. So when I hit log in, what's going to happen is um, it's going to realize there's not a token uh, uh, stored, and it's going to go out and say, all right, we need to now do OAuth, and it's going to redirect to Contenta. And you, you've seen this workflow with GitHub and Twitter and things like that. I always bring up GitHub and Twitter because I am not can't think of any others right away, but you know, everybody that uses OAuth is, is a similar flow. So, so I hit log in, and we get grant access to client. So this, So we're not logged in this session to Drupal and please log in to authorize. So this is where the person would put their password in. This is why um, if everything's set up correctly, OAuth should be better. 
uh, because you're only putting the username and password in on the, the owner of that data, the, the storage house basically for where the credentials are. You're not putting them in, in some front end app and then passing them and going, well, I can do encryption and cryptography. Right. I'll just encrypt that myself <laughs> and it'll be fine, I'm sure. Um, so, so we'll hit log in and we will I'm gonna lower this. Um, I am logging in as UID1 so that everything works. Do not do this at home. Um, you know, set up proper users and permissions and things like that. So, and what it did was it redirected us back. You'll notice, and this is did this fancy. Um, thank you. And by the fancy, but you know, the logout. This is a state thing in React, so it's recognizing that we're logged in. So the little button changes the logout. And then we get the stocks. I think the stock search only shows up now right. because of that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another single page app conditional. We've got, is it like is authenticated? Yeah, it is. A, yeah, something similar. Variable in there. So we're logged in. So here's what's happened. Um, just to show this. We now have the OAuth token. Go ahead and memorize it. Um, <laughs> Kevin's recording it, so it'll, people can take at least get that part of it. This is the one that expires in five minutes. So you got five minutes to use it. To, to <laughs> uh, but... Uh, but that's where we're storing it, session storage. And so, so that's, the, that's the more or less our token that gives us rights. So that token is going to give the rights to whatever user roles were assigned to the user that we logged in at. So that's UID 1, super dangerous, probably not a good idea. Um, but uh, for demo purposes, kind of wanted to show that. And we would pass this along in a header, uh, authorization header, and it would be for, written out kind of like, um, it would be like, Bearer, and I'm just doing this for so you would basically you're, that that's what it would look like as you pass that back uh, with your request for for data uh, from for the protected endpoints that shouldn't have access um, outside of that. So I'm going to stop there with any questions. I guess we're sort of over a little bit, but thank you for hanging with us. Any, so, any questions? So what's the state of the, uh, the CMS? I mean, how well adopted it is? How many people are working on it? That's, yeah, I do not know how, that's a great question. So um, so first first off, I do want to say um, kudos to the team that works on this, Contenta, it's awesome. They On uh, Drupal Slack, there is a uh, Contenta channel uh, to, to go do that. I'd have to ask them, I'm not sure <clears throat> Download wise, how many folks are using? I guess you could. There, there is a main Contenta JSON API project on Drupal.org, but I believe a lot of that stuff's now coming from GitHub, so that kind of clouds the downloads. I'm not sure, but um, but that's a great question. I'm not sure how many people are using it. I, I can say that um, there's probably there seems to be like three or four like, and this is common, right? Anyway, it's done open source work. There's three to four main people that seem to be doing everything. Um, but there are there are people that come along and, and submit PRs and things like that, um, and and I think the state of it is is pretty good. I mean, responsiveness is awesome uh, from the maintainers. I, I submitted a PR a few weeks back and it was merged overnight. Yep. Um, so that's the advantage of you know folks living in Europe and stuff. They can <laughs> do that lossly. And um, so that was uh, so yeah. I don't, you know, I feel like it's still comparable to a lot of the projects we work on. You know, there's a few people that just have a heart for it and they work on it and they see the value in it and a lot of us benefit from it. So, how's that for I have a comment on that. Um, yeah. I, a, a, I work with one of the maintainers and I've asked them about that a few times. Um, it seems to be that the biggest traction uh, is in projects that are within Contenta. So, the different modules that are glued together getting a lot of attention. Um, and people who are coming to this seem to be using it for reference a lot. So digging into it and then figuring out how to integrate the pieces that it has into their sites. I'm sure there's people using it in production, but a lot of the sort of interest lies in being able to look at this. And, or at least that people that are coming to it seem to be coming to 
and say, oh, this is how I, I proof of principle best practices things so. together. Here's all the best practices exactly. Almost. <laughs> Almost think about it like if anybody's ever used Commerce Kickstart, start with Commerce Kickstart. <laughs> <laughs> that was a gimme. Yeah, <laughs> He's sitting in the front. Yeah. <laughs> so if you use Commerce Kickstart, you start there and then you figure out what it's doing and then you do your site a little bit different because you, you're more informed with how to do the setup. You know, so it's kind of a lot of the same ways. Um, there's a lot of things in here. If you were doing this for a real client, you might not want so many things in here. There's a lot of modules as well. It's kind of the kitchen sink as well. You yeah, like not have GraphQL. If you're not using GraphQL, yeah. keep it out and then add it later on your actual project. Um, so it just makes it easier to get into um, to using some of those different technologies. It also lets you test a lot of different ones uh, pretty effortlessly. I think that's kind of the main draw for it. But, do you have a question, Mark? Yeah, so, so our, right now are all these uh, Contenta modules like broken out into contrib modules on Drupal.org and have you, have you two like experimented with, like is the, is the Stockwatch app using just Contenta right out of the box or have you tried to try to experiment just using some of the contrib modules on like a vanilla Drupal 8 instance? It's using Contenta now because we wanted to be purist and to really make sure you guys are happy with us. We, we wanted to really do that because we're saying mystifying content so we're trying to do that but so right now we haven't done that I would say after working with it though I feel like that I could take simple OAuth module I could take JSON API module JSON API extras which gives you extra capabilities because it's called extras um, and and I could take those modules and and I know like a little bit about what each of those does and um, and I could include those now on my own Drupal 8 project and go forward. Or an exi what's exciting is to include it on an existing Drupal 8 project because that comes up now a lot. You've got an existing Drupal 8 site. Someone goes, we want to decouple or we want to experiment with decouple. I'm like, okay, now like, I feel better informed, and I don't think you do too, to like, I could go install that on an existing Drupal 8 site in a test environment and, and kind of get things wired up, which is exciting. Have you looked at the Aquia distribution? That's similar to Contenta? Uh, is it Reservoir? I think that's what it is. I think yes. that's the one. I just didn't know if you guys would play with that, like if there was any different. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and only only because, not, not only because just time and, sure. you know, like, you know, that kind of thing. But I think that's a worthy uh, project to check out and, and that sort of thing. Because right. um, it does, it, what I've heard is it's some, there's some different approaches and all the stuff is opinionated sure. by whoever works on it. So I think that is an interesting part of the academic process and another part of deciding tech. Like when you make these decisions, I mean, they, that's what makes you sway a little bit when you're like in a role as a lead or a you know, CTO for a company or something like that. You're making decisions like, do I go Drupal? Do we decouple? Sweat's coming up before it. Because you're like, these decisions will impact for a while, right? So you want to be educated about that sure. and educate clients on, on those things. So. But thanks for bringing up Reservoir, and I would say, Thomas, thanks for bringing up the fact that these modules are getting attention. I may get this wrong, someone correct me if, if you're more up on some of the current core initiatives, but I believe JSON API, I believe GraphQL is slated in the most recent news I read to go into core, uh, possibly go into core eventually, so. Uh, I think next, uh, what's Well, these things feel major now. Um, when these releases come out, um, but but yeah, so that's that's that that's a great point that Thomas made that these things because they're getting attention, um, that can make a module go in as experimental and more quickly come out as something that can be released, you know, as a. As a and can you explain what an what an experimental module is for? Experimental module is one that you would want to turn on immediately on a production site. <laughs> that's a joke, but. So there's the concept now of experimental modules where, uh, and again, correct me if I get a little bit of this wrong, so I'm going to say it in high level, but it's a way that, uh, and you'll see it if you install you know, any current version of Drupal. Um, that's a flag that you probably don't want to turn these on in production. You, you, there are people that probably use some of these on production, but you've gone through testing and made sure it works for your application. But the idea is that, yes, it's, it's experimental. It may not even stay in, uh, I believe this is correct, if, if enough effort's not put behind it, it doesn't become stable enough, the decision could be made not to keep that in core. So that's probably the biggest risk that would make me not want to use it. But um, does that sound does that sound correct? Yeah. What, do you have any uh, experimental modules that have been pulled out 
I mean, I guess it's early on. Early I can't. There could be. I feel like there has been one, but I can't. Yeah. I, can't remember. Yeah, I, mean, it, I just talked to, heard people talk about the idea that. Yeah. I'm just curious what that. I mean, I guess it would just be kind of. It's a it's a safety net. I think I think Jonathan's coming for us. <laughs> it's a uh, time. We're, we thanks everybody for coming. Um, <laughs>